In this screencast, we're going to look at the location of the cranial nerves on the ventral brain and brainstem. So on the screen, we can see a ventral view of the brain and the brainstem. Here we have the two frontal lobes and the two temporal lobes. Here we can see the pituitary stalk and the mammillary bodies of the diencephalon. Here we can see the two cerebral peduncles and the interpeduncular fossa in between. Here we've got the midbrain, the middle cerebellar peduncles, and the cerebellum here and here, the two cerebellar hemispheres. Here we can see the medulla, we've got the midline, and then we've got a pyramid either side of the midline, and then an olive either side of each of the pyramids. So we've got an olive, pyramid, pyramid, olive. So let's start by drawing out these cranial nerves. If we start with cranial nerves one and two. Now it's important to remember that these aren't actual cranial nerves that we can see here. They're really outgrowths from the forebrain. And then what we can see is we can see the olfactory tracts and the olfactory bulbs. Remember these are outgrowths from the forebrain. We can see the olfactory bulbs here, olfactory bulbs sitting on the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone and they're continuous with the forebrain via these optic tracks. If we look at these from the lateral aspect, so from the side, and then again we can draw our olfactory bulbs and our olfactory tracks. And if you remember what I just said, that the olfactory bulbs are actually sitting on the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, then the cribriform plate is a series of apertures. And these apertures allow the actual olfactory nerves to pass through into the nasal cavity and they're within the nasal mucosa. So here we can see our olfactory nerves. Olfactory nerves passing through the apertures of the cribriform plate. Here we can see the olfactory bulbs and here we can see the olfactory tracts. If we look to cranial nerve number two, again this is just an outgrowth again from the forebrain and this is our optic nerve. We can see our optic nerves coming away from the eyes, receiving light information. And here we can see an optic nerve. We can see the optic chiasma. And then we can see our two optic tracts. The optic nerves pass from the eye through the superior orbital fissure to converge at the optic chiasma and then radiate to the forebrain via the optic tracts. Cranial nerve number three is going to be our ocular motor nerve. So here's cranial nerve number three. Passes through the interpeduncular fossa. It originates from the junction of the midbrain and the pons. And the ocular motor nerve is important in innervating the extra ocular muscles. It passes through the superior orbital fissure. Cranial nerve number four is the only cranial nerve to emerge from the dorsal brain stem and it emerges just inferior to the inferior colliculi. This also passes through the superior orbital fissure and innervates one of the extra ocular muscles, superior oblique. If we then look to the pons, we can see the large trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve which has three important divisions, V1, V2 and V3. These divisions are known as the ophthalmic, the maxillary and the mandibular divisions. So here's cranial nerve number 5, V1, V2 and V3. Also running alongside V3 is going to be a motor division. So here we can draw the motor division, the rest being sensory divisions, although sensation also runs through V3 as well, remember. Sensation coming from the entire face and the motor fibres are going to the muscles of mastication. And these travel within V3. So V1 passes through the superior orbital fissure. V2 passes through the foramen rotundum. And V3 passes through the foramen oval. Coming away from the pontomedullary junction is going to be the sixth cranial nerve. So cranial nerve number six. And this is the abducens nerve. This again supplies just one of the extra ocular muscles. It supplies lateral rectus. It passes through the superior orbital fissure. If we look to cranial nerve number seven and eight, then these are emerging from a region known as the cerebellar pontine angle. So here we've got cranial nerve seven, and here we've got cranial nerve eight. These are known as the facial 
and the vestibular cochlear nerve. The facial nerve and the vestibular cochlear nerve pass into the skull via the internal acoustic meatus. The facial nerve leaves the skull via the stylomastoid foramen, or at least its motor fibers do. The facial nerve does a whole host of functions, including taste and, importantly, motor function to the muscles of facial expression. And these muscle fibers pass out through the stylomastoid foramen. The vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve 8, enters the petrous part of the temporal bone where it supplies the hearing and the balance apparatus, so the vestibule and the cochlea. Cranial nerve number 9 is the glossopharyngeal nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve number 9. This leaves the skull via the jugular foramen alongside cranial nerves 10, 11 and the internal jugular vein. The glossopharyngeal nerve does taste to parts of the tongue and it also does sensation of the pharynx. So that's the glossopharyngeal nerve. And then coming away from the lateral aspect of the medulla as a series of rootlets are cranial nerves 10 and 11. So here we can see cranial nerves 10 and 11, 10 being the vagus nerve and 11 being the accessory nerve. The vagus nerve does a whole series of functions associated with the thoracic and the abdominal viscera. And the accessory nerve is an important motor nerve that supplies trapezius and sternocloid and mastoid. Cranial nerves 9, 10 and 11 pass through the jugular foramen. The final cranial nerve again comes away from the brainstem as a series of rootlets. And this is the hypoglossal nerve and the hypoglossal nerve passes through the hypoglossal canal, and this is a pure motor nerve that goes to the muscles of the tongue. We can see it here emerging from the junction between the pyramids and the olives, the anterolateral sulcus, and we have the hypoglossal nerve. So here we have our 12 pairs of cranial nerves with a rough outline of what their function is.